Hello everyone. So in this video, let us do two problems. Fine. So both of them are easy. The problem name is intersection of two arrays one as well as intersection of two arrays two. Let us solve both of them in this video. See, so the problem statement goes like this that given two integer arrays nums one and nums two return an array of their intersection. Each element in the result must be unique and you may return the result in any order. That's the whole problem. As you can see that nums1 and nums2 is given to you, they are different arrays and you just have to like in the end returns out an array or a vector that is storing out the intersection of both of these numbers in this whole array, but they should be unique. Even if multiple intersections are there, you just have to like print out the unique ones. As you can see that there are two twos that are intersecting, but you only have to return a single two because unique elements will be like returned. So when I see unique things, only one thing comes to my mind that is fast enough and like which can give me unique things that is set. Keep that in mind for further problem solving also. Fine. So it means that set is somewhere used. Now the next thing is how can I find out the unique elements? There are multiple ways you can use maps, you can use sets, whatever you can use. But uh, there's also one more technique that is two pointers that is also very much fast and you can use that that will help you to actually use this technique in a lot of problems also so let us do that technique so for using two pointers to find out the matching elements what you will do is you have to first sort out both of these arrays so for sorting it takes n log n but no problem uh, it is under time constraint only so because it's only a thousand so what you can first do is that sort out both of these arrays okay let us move down to a drawing board so after sorting, let's say the array becomes like this. Okay. So what is the two pointer technique? What you'll do? You'll you use two pointers. So pointers mean that there are two arrows, as you can see, or two variables. You can name it i and j. Okay. And then what you'll do is that you will take these two variables or pointers. I'm just using pointers here. So Pointers means that these are two variables that are pointing towards these indexes and what they do is that I will just check them whether both of these values are giving same like the, both of these values are same or not. So what you can see is let us check some change some different color as you can see that both of them are one. So what it means that both of them are one. So it means that it is giving some intersection because I want to find out the numbers that are same in both of the arrays. So I can use some array to store out one. Fine. Let us move down because both of them are same. Let us move out our i and j both to the next value. So i and j both comes down to the next value. So this is i, this is j. So whether they are same or not. So they are not same. i is 1, j is 2. What to do? Like which pointer to move? Can you tell me? What you can see here is that j is larger, that is equal to 2. And i is smaller, that is equal to 1. Now, moving my smaller pointer, like the value that is smaller to the larger value will actually get a probability to like they can become same. But if I move the larger one, obviously this is a smaller one. If I move my J to the next element, it is obviously that I have sorted it out because there is a sorted I have sorted in the initial part. If I move my J to the next element, it is obvious that the next element will be either equal or larger because it is sorted. Got it. So if it is larger or equal, they will never becomes equal to this i. Why? Because i is always smaller. Got it. So it is always beneficial to move the element that is having a smaller value. The element that is having a smaller value, not the pointer. The element that is the pointer pointing to should be having a smaller value. That pointer should move to the next element. Got it. So which means that I will move my i to the next value. This i will move to the next value. This will become i. And voila, as you can see, both of them become two again. So I will push again a two. Let us move the same pen two in this array. Okay. That is what are the intersection because now both of these elements matched out when both of these elements match out, I will move both the pointers by one. Okay. So I'll move both the pointers by one. So this will come down to this point. That is the side. And this will come down to this point. That is J. And again, both of them are same. So I will again push two here. Now I'll again move both the pointers by one. So as you can see now, I has gone out of bound and J is still inside, but because 
I have gone out of bound, either one of the pointers go out of bound, which means that there are no more elements to compare. So I will just stop at this point. Now, as you can see that the only difference, the array intersection of the two problems in is in the one problem, you have to print all the intersections irrespective whether they are unique or not. So in the array two intersection, you will print out this as the answer. But in the array one intersection, like the first problem, you will have to print out only a unique numbers. And for unique, what you can do is that you can use a set. So either inserting this intersections into a vector or an array, you can insert both of them into a set. When you insert both of them in a set, only the unique ones will be stored out. And so only one and two will be the answer for the first problem. And in the second problem, what you can do is instead of using a set, you can directly insert them into an array so that all the occurrence or all the matchings will be stored out. And that is just the whole solution for both of the problems actually. Okay. Nothing more diff difficult or complicated. So let us move down to the actual solution part. Let us see what is the solution so that you will become more familiar to two pointers. So what I've done here is that I have first sorted out both the arrays using this sort function provided by the C++ STL and then find out the length of that. Then this is a set because in the first problem you have to only provide the unique instances. So using a set, then there are two pointers I and J. I is upon the first array and J is upon the second array and both are initialized to zero because they both start from the zeroth index. Then I use a file loop. So a while loop is only done till both of them are inbound. As you can see, both of them, I is inbound, that is I is less than N and J is less than M. So both are inbound and if any of them go out of bound, I will stop this while loop. Got it? So what I mean checking here, if the current element, the ith element, the ith pointer value is larger, I will move my jth pointer because that is smaller. So like, which means that if this is larger, which means that J1 is smaller. So whichever one is smaller, I will move that. Similarly, if the I1 is smaller, I will move the I1. If the, like if both of them are not smaller, they're equal, then what I'll do, I will push that equal element into the set instead of the vector because it's the first problem and move both I and J by one. Got it? That's what I've explained. If the any one is smaller, I will move that. But if they're equal, I will move both of them and also insert that element into the set. And in the end, because I want to return is it as a vector, I will first iterate over the set. All the elements stored in the set are unique. I will just take all the elements stored in the set and push them into a vector and just print out the vector answer. I hope you get the solution of the first problem. Let us move on to second problem. The second problem, the whole problem is same, nothing much different. Just you have to print out all the instances, not the unique one. So let us move down to the summations directly. So what you can see here is that uh, in the summations, I use almost the same code. I sorted them out using two pointers, but instead of pushing them into a set, now I'm pushing directly into the answer vector, as you can see, and just printing out the answer vector. So that is the difference between the first problem and the second problem. I hope you get the, the possible logic and the code for both of the problems. If you still have any doubts, you can mention down. Thank you for watching this video till this end. I will see you next one. Till I keep coding and bye.